Today on the podcast, we're going to talk about books, cell phones, churches, and a whole lot of other things. Let's talk about the analog church. Welcome to Kingdom Speak with Pastor Daniel McKillop. Sounds like we're going to be busy. Yeah, don't miss anything. I'm sure you get it all covered. Interestingly enough, when we talk about cell phones, I often wonder... You're holding one in your hand. Why does it capture my attention so much? You do know that the first that the world ever heard of Kingdom Speak, you were slamming me because I was on my cell phone. Mm. All right, Pastor McKillop, put down your cell phone. We're recording. Well, it's true. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> what it, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. Seems how you're the one holding your phone okay. in your hand okay. right now. Okay. Hello? Hello? All right. Yeah. You got me? <laughs> yeah. <Good>. This guy's... <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's on the phone, folks. Guys, I'm going to step just, away. He tried to call me right <laughs> now, too. What a, <laughs> what a lovely producer. <laughs> you know, as we get rolling here, somebody sent us a review on their cell phone, and I want to talk about it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. All right, here we go. You guys ready? Hark. The Herald? No, that's the wrong season. Hey, we done shut the door on that season. Go. Interesting way to start the review. I will say that. Okay, Hark. I'm not supposed to get my feedback. Hark. Hark. I got a five-star podcast at a one-star price. Come on. Nice. <laughs> oh, Kingdom Ooh. Speak, if I forget thee, may my right hand <laughs> cleave to the roof of my mouth. <laughs> Thank you very much, Zach. Dereez, if that's his actual name. Thank you, Zach, for listening to Kingdom Speak. We appreciate Absolutely. that. And Thanks for writing us in the book. <laughs> may you never forget the may you never forget us. Yes. We will never forget thee, Zach. Best podcast out there. Here's another review. I've enjoyed every episode. The biblical insight is incredible and the guests are amazing. Boy, we'll second that. Besides producer Randy. I listen hey, hey. almost daily, which means I listen to a few of the podcasts multiple times. Oh, yes. Wow. Keep them coming. God bless. And that is from Backwoods. There we go. Right from the Backwoods. Yeah. All right. Great stuff. Hey, you know, that that really helps us this, this week. I don't think we talked about this, but we haven't put it out on our social media yet. Mm, nope. But we ranked 82. 82nd. 82nd in the USA. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. Chartable. Thank you. And that's what's putting us there. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So those reviews help us beat Getting the nasty. Getting some great yeah. traction. Yep. Yeah. The nasty algorithms that uh, are throttling everyone nowadays. We appreciate you helping us. We're uh, beating the sensors. Mm. Come on. Mm. Okay. So today we're not going to hear a massive Bible bomb from you. No. We're going to talk about... Because I don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> I well, find that Oh, come on. <laughs> to believe. Yeah. Let's just drop one for no yeah, reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. There we go. Wow. Do you believe wow. that, Brother Derek? Wow. There we go. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> now, we thought it would be cool to... Uh, I think way back we committed to doing this, to do some episodes talking about some books. We did. Um, music, that's in the future. Authors, that kind of stuff. And everybody's kind of in that, in that New Year's resolution mode. Oh yeah, yeah. I've you added know. books to my Kindle that I may never see this year again. Yep. but yep. they're there. But they don't get dusty. No, that's true. There, that's true. Yeah. So, have you have you ever have you ever done this? Speaking of New Year's resolutions, and said, "No, I, I want to read X number of books." Mm -hmm. Then you go, and you see somebody else posting about their. New Year's resolution, and they're like tripling you. <laughs> and you just kind of feel like crawling <laughs> underneath the rock and just well, shutting the door. I was just about to ask, how many books are you planning on reading this year? 66 for sure. Oh, I'm good. Oh, give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, yeah, I'm going to take my <laughs> oh. Well, come on. Seriously. You're not. You're not. <laughs> Seriously. So that's why these guys, when they say, I read... 80 books this year. Exactly. Read your Bible. Okay. Yeah. We, we just cracked the code. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm not impressed anymore. Hey, 
I'm going to stick in the book on Jude for the year. <laughs> Since <laughs> when were you not impressed that someone read their Bible from cover to cover? <sighs> Get out of that hole. I have nothing to say right now. <laughs> 66 books. <laughs> well, hey. <laughs> I'm going to use it though. Yeah, yeah, that's right. When I'm at the end of the year and I use it. You're going to tweet. You're going to tweet. Oh, your, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm. yeah. Yeah. So now, um, can we talk about this book, where it came from before we get into it? Yeah. yeah. I, th I think we need to because this is kind of the outcropping of some really neat relationships that we've formed yeah. over the last. Yeah. Who knew? What? Eight, nine months. Yeah. So we started right around the 1st of April. Right. Uh, April Fool's, ironically. <laughs> that was our kick off good timing on that we yeah. really thought that out yeah and uh is that when we brought the producer in <laughs> uh, go ahead anyways <clears throat> welcome back after that commercial break <laughs> there was a lot of things happen this year you know current events and all that that we didn't sure see, but meeting the people that we met through this podcast was pretty cool it helps and hearing the stories it that helps. we heard even familiar faces who we just broke into new ground and yeah Man, our, that episode we just had with Bishop Odom was... That was incredible. I mean, we've heard him preach countless yeah. times, but that was just so cool. Oh, yeah. incredible. Yeah. We're going to hear him again. Oh, man, that's good news. Yeah. Good news. Yeah. So this this book that we're going to be talking about that we've, we've both read came out of a relationship that mm -hmm. Kingdom Speak forged with Pastor Daniel Bracamonte. Yes, sir. Am I still Shout pronouncing out. that right? Bracamonte. Yep. Because the reason we got this book is when we interviewed him. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Yep. He said he would give us a free book if we said his pronounced his name right. Do you remember? <laughs> oh, yeah. You remember oh, that? That's right. And so like he, he, he gave put us me, the phonics and then he made us. He name. did. He did. So I had it like scrolling on my screen. <laughs> With the right syllables. Bracamonte. And how long did it take? We to love you, it? Apostolic Review. Yes, thank that's you. much easier to say, by the way. Apostolic Review. Yeah. Yes. The AR community. Unless you don't go to an Apostolic Church, and then it gets like Apostolic. Well, well Apostolic Pentecostal. Yeah. <laughs> if you ain't going to one, you better be soon be going to one. Amen. Amen. You can use our church after we're gone. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We won't even charge you. Yeah, we won't. We won't. <laughs> we won't. So the book uh, that he sent uh, us. The book that he sent us is this. I don't know, oh, can, producer. You, can you yeah. can you get it? Analog Church yep. by J. Kim. Yeah. Incredible. Why uh, we why, why we need we, real yeah, people. Exactly. Yeah. While we need real people, places and things in a digital age. Mm -hmm. Wow. Is it ever relevant right now? Wow. And it was not written no. as a result of of COVID restrictions yeah. and yeah. people not being able to. I remember him saying though, when we talked on all things apostolic, he said this book would be good for, you know, he says it's very relevant right now. Right? It, it's very relevant for church leaders. Yeah. And I, I think anybody, mm -hmm. anybody in our audience, you need mm -hmm. to get the book. Mm -hmm. It's just full of some incredible, mm -hmm. incredible insight. Um, but for sure, the church world has been kind of thrust into a mm. bit of uh, adapting to a to oh, yeah. a, a new format, for at sure. least for at least for some churches. I mean, yeah. we we are out there more digitally now than we were a year ago, right? By Lo far, locally, yeah. not yeah. just the podcast, but we've for amped sure. up our broadcast, all that kind of stuff. And realistically, probably would not have gotten there at least that quick. No, no, no. It pushed us yeah, for sure. With, we did. You know, yeah. we yeah. we were we were shoved into it. Yeah. So um, I don't think that's a bad thing. Not looking back now, it's painful to go through, though. Yeah, I don't think it's a bad thing. But we we we've got to make sure mm -hmm. that we don't lose the analog, mm -hmm. to use uh, the writer's mm -hmm. term, that analog experience, uh, and 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 keep church from becoming just a performance. Um, that really cheapens it. In fact, one of the things that he says in here is there's a difference between having church online mm -hmm. and being an online church. Yeah. All right. So yeah. it, it, you know that that's that's something he kind of hammers at. Mm -hmm. um, 
every church needs to be online yeah. in some way. Oh, or, definitely. Or, Nowadays, or, for sure. You know, yeah. I think he, he describes it uh, as the front door. Okay. Okay. The front door to your church is your website, your web presence, your yep. social media. Um, but that the true, this, this is such a great example. The true intimate experiences, mm -hmm. you don't have those on your front doorstep. You invite those people in mm. to sit down in your living room at your kitchen table. Yeah. So the quality conversing mm -hmm. doesn't happen at the front door. So it we makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A great. So we we can't make the online presence the end result. Yeah. Right. Got to be the invite. It's yeah. well said. It's yeah. it's what invites people in. Mm -hmm. So websites yeah. need to be done tastefully. They need oh, yeah. to be done yep. professionally. Yeah. Um, social media needs to be done right. Yep. That's where people go to to look to look at you. But mm. but that's where they're going to get their first glimpse of is this what I want? Mm -hmm. that's, yeah, that's fair. Yep. But but it's it, you meet them there mm. and then invite them into an analog experience. There better be more than yeah. just the website. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> if the best thing about your church is your website, oh well, there, <laughs> there, said it well. Yeah. Then. Um, yeah, maybe you should sell cars or something. Why don't we talk about what's wrong with selling cars? Nothing. Wow, that was kind of nasty. Nothing. In fact, there's some there's 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 a guy big This is on Instagram. I think he's one of our followers, big car guy maybe from Memphis. Oh, really? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, if that's who you are, I think he goes to Brother Adams Church maybe. Give us a shout out. And if you're in Memphis, go buy a car. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Let's talk about singing. Very cool communal aspect of singing in the book. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I, I think we need to dial it back a touch farther than that before we dive into the okay. singing, though. Okay. Because he spends a lot of time, and mm. we're not going to talk about the whole book. You need to read it. But mm. um, one of his ideas is that digital communities, mm -hmm. I've got some, some highlights here mm -hmm. that I journaled out of the book, Digital communities are convenient and customizable. Right. Okay? Yep. One of the key values of the digital age, I'm quoting him now, is individualism. But if we're not careful, it leads to isolation when taken to its extreme. That's true. So these digital communities are very convenient. You can you can get church on your phone. Yeah. Mm. Right? In your PJs. Yep. Sitting in your rocking chair. That is convenient. Yes, very. You can yeah. customize it. Oh, yeah. You know? Multiple streams. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I like to worship from here. No, no, no. This <laughs> singing is horrible. Yeah. yeah. Mute. There's got to be something better. Yeah. Okay. He goes on to say, they are based, these digital communities are based on preferences and designed to be easily and quickly chosen or unchosen. Don't like something someone's saying on your Facebook feed? Unfriend them. Mm-hmm. An analog community, in contrast, is different. When we show up, again, I'm quoting this, when we show up in the flesh, it's not as easy to unfriend, unfollow, and block. Is that the truth? <laughs> oh, yeah. They're, so, they're still there. So right? you, you, you get, get the mental image of this, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. You and all your friends, like, pull them out of the digital world and set them in your living room, and they're all sitting around, someone's sitting in your lazy boy, and mm -hmm. he says something you don't like, and you just go like, Unfollow, unfriend, and, and he it, just disappeared. Or his lips keep moving, but you don't hear him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, for sure. I know. Right. Yep. That forces so, you in a different. It does, man. Mm. It does. Mm. Mm. Analog communities. This is this is a great a great statement and so true. Analog communities are based not on preferences, but on presence. Mm hmm. Presence. So he really spends um, a lot of time dialing in on the fact that the church needs to stand in contrast with mm -hmm. the world. Okay. So the church does not need, and he, he calls this stuff out, man. He, he, he's not apostolic. He calls it out. 
The church doesn't need smoke machines. Mm -hmm. The concert venue has that. Mm -hmm. In fact, he gives numerous examples of this generation of people. Okay, let me give you this. This just comes back to me. He, he cites the uptick in the revenge of analog, he calls it. Okay. The revenge of analog. So this, this new generation that's coming up aren't hooked to their phones and their digital devices necessarily mm. for relationships like even we are. Right. So he cites the difference between digital music mm -hmm. and vinyl records. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's so rise. you digital music is great in this sense that it's customizable. Mm -hmm. It's individual. Mm -hmm. But the vinyl records, there is an uptick in in those in in the younger generation mm -hmm. because it's experiential. Yes. Oh yeah. Digital, he says this. The, these are great points. Digital informs analog transforms. Wow. wow. What kind of church you have? Dig yeah. uh, right. <laughs> right. So as much as we need our front door to be right, and as much as we need to be as proactive as at keeping the front front of house looking good, so to speak. Yeah. Um, a little, a little double click, giving someone a heart on a post is not the same as shaking their hand. Yeah. No, it never is. No. It's not the same as hugging their neck. There is that need for that analog connectivity. And so the, the pull always has to be to get them in the building, right? Yes. Yes. That's, that's where we can compete with anyone. We can't compete with a lot of other folks and a lot right. of different platforms. That's right? Exactly right. That's right. It's an, there's you've got a bigger budget, you can have a nicer church. Yep. But you can't have a more effective one. Yep. Yep. So he, he really highlights a lot of that stuff. And and so that kind of dovetails into... Um, the singing. The singing. Yeah. Just, mm -hmm. just before you move on, what is a vinyl record? Oh, my. It's a big CD. Okay. Basically, you take a, a CD... A plastic CD. And you roll it out. <laughs> okay. Yep. yep. Yeah, that's what it is, producer okay. Randy. Yeah, you need to see if you can get one for your uh, Mazda. Okay, good. Yeah, I thought I used to play one, but that was in third grade. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You probably have identified them as UFOs or something. <laughs> you sounded like a broken one a time or two. Oh, oh! you want to talk about <laughs> generational identity? This was a few years ago. I would say Jaron was probably four or five, and we were out at Grandma Corbin's, mm -hmm. like great Graham Corbin. Mm -hmm. And so she was asking for a CD and she was calling it a little record. <laughs> That's funny. A little record. And so I'm looking at Jaron going, he, he's going to be identifying this. Oh man. So differently. Right. CD ROMs nowadays are like, he would look at a record and go, man, look at that big CD, which He's not even going to do that. We, we, we don't even have them anymore. But So the analog is about the experience. Mm -hmm. It's about the experience. So uh, when it comes to singing, mm -hmm. yeah, do you, do you have something there you just want to chime in? Um, I was going to talk just quickly. I, I like what he said about discipleship. So he starts oh, yes. out the book, and he talks about online dating and speed dating and dating apps and about how you just swipe through these relationships so quickly. Yeah. Yep. Which is so weird for me to even think about. Mm. Yep. And he talks about how if we're not careful, then we will disciple people the same way. So wow. somebody comes to church and you either hit it off with a relationship with them or you don't, or we expect them to mm -hmm. form their relationship with the church that quickly, you know, that swipe relationship. Or sure. Not. Bypass the time element. Exactly. Yep. Right, and he quotes yep. he quotes this guy Dallas Willard, who said that discipleship is a process of steadily learning how to live the mm. Jesus way, steady, wow. consistent, unwavering, focused movement in one direction. Yeah, wow. we just got done talking about so focus. Yeah. Good. That's what discipleship's all about, right? It is. Whether you it feel is. like it or not, you just come back to church and sit down. Right, and, and it's about transcendence, okay? He, yeah. he uses that word a lot, transcendence. Mm -hmm. So that kind of segues into disciples are people who worship. They don't just observe worship. That's right. 
So he, he let, let me just read this. He, he quotes uh, out of a book entitled Honest Worship by Manuel Luz. Probably a good book to read. Yeah. This is what he says. In the midst of all the smoke machines, high def video loops, and latest worship hits, we may be settling for something less than true transcendence, something less than spirit-breathed worship, something less than God on God's terms. Wow. Are we inadvertently teaching ourselves to settle for spectacle and to be satisfied by titillation and maybe even become dependent on it in our worship service? Bro. Wow. Bro. That hits us right where we're at, doesn't it? Whew. It does. So he goes on, he describes the difference between entertainment and engagement. Worship is about engaging. Mm -hmm. Okay? And he, he makes... Um, he, he Andy Crouch, he quotes him. Let, let me just give this quote to you. I hope this makes everybody go buy the book because it's good. The reorientation of our musical lives around consumption is robbing us of something deeper. It is robbing us of a fundamental form of worship. So this is where he, he really kind of dumpster dives mm -hmm. into the fact that predating the 19th century, if you were going to experience worship, sorry, music, if you're going to experience music, it was about location. Mm -hmm. You had to go somewhere where there was a live performance of music. Yeah. Okay, we're in a world now where music has been able to become something we consume in isolation. I can be riding down the road in the yep. car with you, and I can listen to mm -hmm. my genre of music. You can listen to yours. You can listen to yours, and everything is tailored to again to our digital experience. Mm -hmm. But he said music was always meant to be communal before it was recorded, mm -hmm. to where you could enjoy it in isolation and individual individuality. You had to go somewhere. It was about a location. It was about community, mm. and the church was the place that most frequently provided that experience. Very interesting. Wow. Not a concert hall, right. wow. not a symphony, but the church week in and week out provided that location where someone could go and engage. They never went there to be entertained because music was never about just listening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was about blending your voice with everybody around you. Very cool. Submerging yourself, immersing yourself mm. in the experience of that moment. Very cool. Very cool. Just to validate that, I just got done reading a story about the guy who wrote um, Silent Night. The, okay. Uh, yeah. You could call it a Christmas anthem. And um, he was a musician who went around doing, uh, basically, you know, we would call it touring nowadays. And they did most of their concerts in churches because that's where the organ was in the community. It was in the big cathedrals. Wow. And that's where they did all their music. Cool. Wow. Okay. And ironically, just to give you the scoop of the book, the organ breaks down, so they have to cancel the concert. So he's walking home, and he's looking at the community, and he comes up with the, the lyrics to Silent Night. <laughs> and it was the first Christmas song to be sung. That's a trip. Without an organ, he sang it with an acoustic guitar. And it caught on, spread like wildfire. Singing it ever since. That's a trip. It's pretty cool, pretty cool. But That's yeah, just those organs were in those tabernacles, right? That's where everybody... And you, we even see it here in some of the large Roman Catholic communities. Sure. The size of these buildings, sure. they're large enough, and when you when you factor that in with the population growth we have now. So when you factor there were smaller populations and these large cathedrals, everybody went to them. Right. It, everybody went. Right. It was the... So evidently, there was an experience well, somewhere. Okay, and, th and that is something. That is something that, as a musician and as someone who enjoys good music, and I think church music needs to be as good as it can be, mm. It doesn't need to be so good that it's entertaining. Right. Right. It should be experiential. It's got to be something that engages. I wouldn't even say just experiential. It needs mm. to be engaging. Mm. There is nothing, there is nothing that to me yeah. 
hits the mark of a of of what worship is all about mm. is that from the front to the back, side to the side, yep. not just the front line, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, not just the front line. Yeah, yep. but everybody is engaging mm. in it. That yeah. that that changes the experience altogether. Yeah, altogether. Absolutely. Man, there's 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 so much. You can't. He he, he breaks it down to you can't customize the church mm-hmm. to be what you want. And so he quotes this. I've got to. I got to quote this. Give you this quote of Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Those who love their dream of a Christian community more than the Christian community itself. So, in other words, that what what they what they dream it to be more than the Christian community itself, they become destroyers of that Christian community, even though their personal intentions may be ever so honest. Hmm. So your church will never live up to the dream ideally that you have. Okay? A That's church, right. yeah. the body of Christ, has uncomely parts. Right. Yeah, for sure. Yep. So if everybody built their model church as they envisioned it in their mind, they would never have anybody in the choir that didn't hit every note. They would never have a musician that didn't. <laughs> yeah. Always click it off, right? The usher would always be in a in a good mood. The, you, you know, everybody. The sound man would always be paying attention. And for sure, the pastor would always be lovable, huggable, <laughs> approachable. We love our huggable pastor. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right? Yep. And if you're not careful, you'll fall, you'll fall in love with the ideal and you'll assassinate the real mm-hmm. when analog communities are all about me compromising with what's around me. Mm-hmm. and making the adjustments in me, not just blocking what I don't see eye to eye with, but engaging and making those adjustments. That's what church is all about. You go to church with people that don't have the same personality as yeah. you. Mm-hmm. They don't enjoy the same things as you. Yep. And you still love them because they bring a sense of value, worth, diversity mm-hmm. to that faith community mm-hmm. that makes it so yep. incredible. Yep. Mm. But if it's just a digital deal, you unfollow and block them all. Yep. And your church is just full of people that look like you. Whew. And that'd be weird. Help us, God. Uh, let me ask you this. He goes through a, a, a cool little time warp where he starts when he talks about basically how the church is not immune to change. And in other words, the church does have to change. Right. Um, so I want to ask you where you think church is going or where we should be going but how he highlights that is he talks about first the printing press and how yes. that was developed yeah and he i mean you need to read the book but basically to sum it up when emphasis became placed on printed materials then there was a change that happened to the sermons because there was more written material for the deliverers to Correct. You know, for sermons he talks about the, that's is that where he talks about the synagogue often being set up circular, right? So in those settings, they would only have maybe a few benches for sick people around the edges or whatever. Right. right. Uh, fast forward, printing press uh, sermons become longer, so people start to want to sit down. So they put pews in lines, right, with <laughs> hell down the middle, <laughs> like the right? line of text. That's right. Yeah. And he he draws the analogy to. Because of the emergence of the printing press and books, the church began to resemble a book at that point, if you right. were to look at it. Center aisle. Phenomenal. Bookmark. Yeah, the binding. Yes. Yeah. Totally. Stop. Totally. Yeah. Wow. Is that incredible? That's really but cool. But it yeah. doesn't stop there. So then he talks about television and now the appeal for visual mm-hmm. and how churches now are going to start, and they do undoubtedly. And to be honest, when we started broadcasting, you you do have to change lighting it, the church does change. Yep. So, you yep. know, where does it stop? Where does it go? I, I think, you know, we, we talked about this in church, actually, mm-hmm. what, Tuesday night. Um, and we, we talked about sameness. Yeah. <laughs> and that a scribe, Jesus said, the scribe brings out of his treasure house both old and new. Mm. I, I think the guiding post Mm. for the church as it has to adapt. I mean, we clearly have had to adapt. 
We can't have in-person services right now. Yep. So what do we do? Nothing. It, I like, wouldn't say that, that would that's be That's the answer? Yeah, no. <laughs> we all just like don't do anything? Or do we adapt? So I think the anchor post that guide the church through the adapting process as it is needed is that anything new must be rooted in something mm. old. Mm. So the fear that I have about setting up a camera in church is that it it we've got to resist the urge to make preaching become a performance. Right. The purpose of the camera is to capture the apostolic the moment. The apostolic moment, exactly. But... It's a fine line. Yeah. Yeah. You can't okay. allow the it camera is. to change the apostolic moment. Yeah. Mm. So we're not televising church. It comes back to what the guy said. Mm. We're having church online. We're not having an online church. Yeah. Right? Yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. So we are having analog church through a digital transmission. Mm. We are not having digital church. We're not going to change how we have church. No. No. And to be honest with you, Pentecostal church is not camera friendly. No. 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 For sure. So you have got to be intentional that as we adapt through different seasons to meet certain needs, that that we don't lose the mm. core of who we are. A fine balance, but yet you're pushed into it with your feet dragging. Regardless. Oh. Right? Who, who really thinks, which, which, which would you rather think that I would have on Sunday? Preach to that camera right there. I'm just going to preach that camera. Just preach to that camera. Or preach to a church packed full of people. <laughs> yeah. Like, is this really even a debate right now? So you're not impressed right now that you can preach to a camera and it just be easier not to no. deal with. Pastor, you should embrace the opportunity. No. Listen, it's embrace much, the opportunity. It's, it's way easier as a pastor just to sit home, speak to the same. I've heard that. I vehemently disagree. <laughs> well. Yep. So. No room for debate. <laughs> So he says we're, we're, we're foolish to think that it's not going to affect the church. But yet we have to learn to get the benefits. Nobody would doubt that although they change the seating in the church, the printing press, we benefited from that. Yes. Right? So yes, absolutely. The digital age we're in now, it's, it's pushing us out of our comfort zones. It is. But hopefully we can grab the positives out of it and have the same when we're done. Loyalties. Yeah. 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 We've got to have the same loyalties. But what a great point. It was really, really good. Yeah. Um, the guy's writing this from Silicon Valley. Jay Kim, the author. Jay Kim. Jay's a loyal listener. If you uh, want to Thanks. come on the podcast, Jay, please, by all means. We love you, yep. Jay. Text me. Text yep. me, Jay. And we'll, you have my number. And we got we to we go the whole way up. Yep. Pastor Daniel Bracamonte. Thank you for the book. That's right. Apostolic review. If you're not following them, what are you doing anyway? That's right. What, what are you doing? So, wow. That was a bit of a different episode, but right? I think it's worth your time mm. to get that book. I got a call to catch. Yeah. Yeah. Let's wrap yep. up. You got to use your cell phone. Yeah. I got 66 books to read. Yep. It's nice talking to you, but I got to go. Can't steal that. That's fine. <laughs>